Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to be talking about Zip, which is a built-in in Python. And I'm going to show you a few little quirks with it, uh, as well as how to do unzip, which will be the opposite operation of zip, uh, as well as zip longest, which um, is slightly different than zip. But anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so for this, we're just going to be working with Python 3 today. Uh, note that I'm using 3.10. We're actually going to be showing some features that are brand new in 3.10. So I say brand new, but 3.10 has been out for a while now. Um, but let's talk about zip. So zip is a built-in, I guess it is a class. Uh, you don't really think about it much as a class. It's more like a function that happens to return an iterator. Uh, note that I say iterator here. It used to return a list in Python 2, uh, but that's... <laughs> old history now. Uh, an iterator you can think of as a lazily evaluated thing that you can loop over. Uh, for instance, range returns an iterator as well. And you know, if you loop over a range, you're going to get you know each value in it. Anyway, uh, what Zip allows you to do is combine multiple iterators into a single iterator of tuples. Now that Probably doesn't make sense without me showing an example. Uh, but let's say that we had two related iterators here. Let's say that we had, uh, I don't know, ranks as uh, 1 to 10. Let's actually make it a list so it's easier to see what's going on. Uh, and then we had, well, let's do 1 to 5 because I don't want to type out 10 things. <laughs> uh, let's say we had ranks and we also had, I don't know, people or something. Uh, or, I don't know, colors, sure. Red, orange, yellow, green, and blue. I don't know. That's, that's five colors. Uh, and let's say that we wanted to iterate over these ranks and colors together. Now, one way would be to just store them together. Um, but this is an incredibly silly example, but I wanted to show you how it works anyway. Uh, so you can call zip over ranks and colors, and it will give you back a, well, it gives you back a zip iterator object. Like I said earlier, iterators are sort of lazy. You can, uh, it will not evaluate the inner parts until you need them uh, to save memory, essentially. Uh, but you can call list on an iterator to uh, directly serialize it, and this is what it sort of looks like. So you can iterate over both the uh, value from this list and this list at the same time. And actually, you can zip as many things as you want. So if you were to zip three things, you'll see that we're going to get you know, red twice here. Now, typically, the way you will use this is you will uh, use it in a for loop. So if we did zip ranks colors, we can, oops, got the keyword in. We can now print uh, idx and color. And you can see that we're able to loop over those sort of in parallel. Okay, that's the basics of zip. Now zip has one little sort of foot gun, which is if one of them is longer than the other. So let's say that we, uh, Pend it on violet as a color here. So now we have five ranks, but we have six colors. Now, if you use zip here, what zip will do is it'll pick the shortest sequence between these two, and it'll just sort of ignore the extra values here. Now, ignoring values is often a programming error, a, a mistake that's made, and Python by default will do that silently. So just to show that, we do our uh, our loop again. Um, you'll see that it stopped at blue and it just sort of ignored violet. Now in Python 3.10, they added a strict equals true named argument to the zip function. And if you set strict equals true, I believe it will error at the time that one of them gets exhausted and one of them is not exhausted. There's still a little tiny bit of a foot gun. Oh, actually, Oh, no, yeah, yeah. So you'll see that it iterated through both of them, and then it noticed that one of them was longer, so it stopped and raised in value error. Uh, this is nice because it catches the programming error, but note that it still is actually performing your loop up until that point. So there's, there's still a little bit of cost for error, but at least you're going to know about the error rather than it just mysteriously uh, ignoring those extra values. And that's when you set uh, strict equals true. There is a way to iterate over both of them, uh, by keeping all of the values and putting in some sort of a placeholder value. And you can do that with zip longest. If we import iter tools and we do for idx, idx color in iter tools dot zip longest, uh, it will put in by default none, I believe. Let's print those again and color equals. 
Yeah, so you can see here that we did get to iterate over everything and it substituted in a none here. I believe there's, let me actually look up Python 3 iter tools. I don't, I don't use these functions very often, but uh, I believe there's a way to say, yeah, if you specify fill value, you can give it a different way to, uh, let's say that we put a fill value of negative one here, and then we print these again. You'll see that we can substitute in whatever fill value that we want here. So that's zip longest. It's a little bit different than zip, uh, and it can give you a way to handle the mismatch in length. Of course, mismatch in length is such a rare, rare occurrence that I don't think you'll ever need to use this. Um, the last thing that I wanted to show you is unzipping something. So earlier we called list zip on this, and you'll see that it gave us a bunch of tuples, uh, but it may, it may be that your data comes in like this and you instead want to grab the columns out of this. So imagine this is like a, a spreadsheet or something and you want to get the, just the second column data or just the third column data. So an interesting thing about this, let's actually make this into a list. An interesting thing about zip is you can actually use it to unzip things. So if we call zip and we spread in the contents of our list, so this is essentially going to pass each of these inner tuples as a separate argument, uh, this will actually give us an iterator now over the columns. You can see here, we now have the column that's uh, just these numbers here. We have the second column, which was the colors, and we have our third column here. So if we wanted to grab out, say, the second column here, we could call zip and then splat in our previously zipped data or our, our uh, row-based data, and then we get out columns. And I've used this trick quite a lot. I really like this one. <laughs> it's a little bit uh, fiddly to think about, but it's it's definitely something that I've used quite a bit. But anyway, that's zip, uh, zip with strict, zip longest, and how to unzip as well. Hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.